Will there be anything else, Mr. Barkley? No, thanks, Charles. Jared, look. What? Well, it would appear we're alone. Well, it's past 10 o'clock, Mr. Barkley. Well, it can't be. Don't worry about it, Miss Randall. You two just take your time. Thank you, Charles. Do you know what this train is? No, tell me. Something out of time and place. It's like traveling in another dimension. These last four days didn't happen. None of this is real. Frightens me when I think that I plan to stay in Washington for another day. Miss this train. What made you change your mind? I don't know. All I know is that you're here and so am I. And I think my whole life has been changed around. I think I knew this was going to happen the first moment I laid eyes on you. You sure that's not the champagne? No, it's not the champagne. I would like to make a toast. To the Coastal and Western Railroad. Here's to that. Denver coming up, Miss Randall. Randall. Oh. Here you are, Charles. I'll get your change. That's right, kid. Well, thank you, sir. Charles. Yes, sir? I want you to take my baggage out of the next car and put it off the train. But I thought you were going on to Stockton, Mr. Barkley. I've changed my mind. Every trip counts, all. Jared back yet? No, no, not yet. When do you expect him? Well, now, that is a very interesting question. We uh, got a letter from him just the other day from Denver. It seems that. Cass Hyatt. That's right. The governor gave him a pardon, didn't you know? No, I didn't. Jared knew. I thought he told you. Probably didn't want to worry us. What's he doing back in Stockton? 
This was his home before I went to prison? Well, I hope his home is the only reason for being here. I told Kimball that we'd hold off making any decision until Jared got back. That all right with you? Well, I guess it's gonna have to be. I just don't get it, what Jared's doing in Denver all this time. Oh, I'm sure he'll tell us all about it when he comes back. Well, now, I wouldn't be too sure. He may keep that a secret, too. Well, what's that supposed to mean? Well, he never did tell us that Cass Hyatt had been pardoned. Cass Hyatt? So I'm in town just this morning. He's out of Quentin. Well, you don't think he still holds a grudge against Jared, do you? I don't know. Hyatt said that Jared framed him just to make a name for himself and swore to get even with him. It was the last thing he ever did. Seven years is a long time. A man changes. I hope so. It's Jared! <sighs> Didn't you let us know you we were coming home tonight? Well, well, I was going to, but at least. How are you? Well, what in Denver took you so long? Well, I guess the uh, best explanation is for you to meet her yourself. Her? Well, then, this is Beth. How do you do? Hello, Mrs. Barkley. It's my brother Nick. Howdy. Brother Heath. How do you do? Well, I guess there's no other way to say it. Beth and I are married. Mary? You don't mean it. Well, where? When? Three days ago in Denver. Well, welcome to the Barclay branch. Thank you, Mrs. Barclay. Thank Forgive us for not sending you a telegram, but Jared wanted well, to surprise you. He sure <laughs> did. Well, Patel, we, uh, we met on a train from Washington. Beth was on her way to Denver to teach school. I got off the train, and there was Jerry. Now, Mother, Beth wanted to wait and be married here, but I didn't want to give her a chance to change her mind. Well, now, you should have let us know why we'd have thrown you a party that all of California had never forgotten. But don't think you did us out of a celebration. Nick, let's get that champagne. You bet. You see, I warned you about this, too. <laughs> Come in. I have so many questions to ask, I don't know where to begin. Oh, my goodness. I just thought of something. What's that? I'm a mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that looks, sir? Oh, that looks fine, Mrs. Mm -hmm. Barkley. Well, what about the flowers? Do you think they're all right? Lovely. Well, I don't know. I, I just... Mother! Don't... Nick, don't shout like well, that. Why, why? Beth and Jared are still asleep. Asleep at 10 o'clock in the morning? I'll go get No, 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 no. You, you get it. Oh, yes. No, Silas, you get it. You yes. hold these. I'll get them. Well, I've never seen you like this before. You're as jumpy as a frog with a hiccup. I've never had a daughter-in-law in the house before. Well, now, what is so special about that? If you don't know, there's no use in my explaining it. Besides, wait until you're a mother and... <laughs> it's Miss Brady, ma'am. Tell her I'll be with her in a few minutes. What? Yes. what? Well, well, she's going to help us with the reception. A reception? When? For Beth and Jared, Friday evening. Or did I decide on Saturday? Oh, well, it doesn't make any difference. There's so much to do. Invitations to get out, and the house has to be... I do wish Audra were here. Well, now, Philadelphia's not that far. I'm sure she'll make it. Mother! Quiet! Nick! What? Oh. Who was at the door? Keep it down. What? Well, with all this noise, it doesn't matter. Where are you going with that? I'm taking it up to Beth and Jared. Well, they're not there. What? Well, they sneaked out about an hour ago and said they were going into town. They told me to tell you. But I guess I forgot. Huh? <laughs> oh. Well, madam, this is where I slave. Jared Barkley, attorney at law. You better be careful. Stockton is a conservative town. People will talk. Hello, Hyatt. You don't seem very surprised to see me. I'm not. I heard over a month ago the governor was going to give you a pardon. Oh? I'm surprised you didn't tell him he was making a mistake. I'm an attorney, not a judge. No hard feelings, then? Suppose you tell me. None here.
Jerry, who, who is that man? Nobody important. The important thing is how you're going to change my office all around once you've seen it. And then tomorrow we'll go into town and buy you a new dress for the reception. Would you like that? Yes, thank you. I would. Here. Is this enough? Oh, fine. Thank you. Oh. Would you like a taste? Yes. That's one of Jared's favorite dishes. That's good. Mm. You know, when I think of all the things I have to learn about Jared, they're the little things as well as the important ones. I wonder if we shouldn't have waited. Oh, no, Beth, no. You did what was right for both of you. You loved each other and trusted each other. However, if there's anything that husband of yours won't tell you about himself, you let me know. Do you mean that? Yes. Who is Cass Hyatt? Jared and I met him when we were in town yesterday. There was something about the way he looked at Jared that frightened me. I asked about him and Jared wouldn't tell me anything. Well, there's nothing to tell, really. It happened a long time ago and... Beth? Where is everybody? Beth? Mr. Barclay. Ah, there you are, young lady. Well, now, what are you doing home at this hour? Have you forgotten you have a wife to support? And have you forgotten that we have a date? We do? Didn't I tell you? No. Oh, well, I just have. Well, where are we going? That, my darling, is a secret. Well, give me five minutes to sit. I'll give you five, you'll take 15, and be ready in 30. Somehow I get the feeling that uh, you're very much in love with that girl. Now, whatever gave you that idea? Mm. Jared, it's a beautiful spot. Do you really think so? Mm, yes. Come on. You know, ever since I was old enough to scramble up into a saddle, I've been coming up here. When I was, uh, when I was about 10, I used to come up here and cry whenever I thought the world was being mean to me. Oh. And when I was about 20, I used to come up here and write poetry. Some of the worst poetry you've ever read in your life. <laughs> I think that's when I must have named it Isla del Cielo. Island of the skies. Jared, that's beautiful. Our island, Beth, if you want it. Ours? Build our home here. Watch our children struggle and grow. Probably cry a lot. Maybe someday read some of their bad poetry. Yeah, what's this? I hope those are tears of happiness. Jared, please, let's not have a big house. All right. And promise me one thing. What? Let's build a house without a roof, so we don't have to shut out all of this lovely sky. A house with no roof. I'll remember that. Jared, look at all of these lovely flowers. <laughs> My God, Beth! You've been after me for two days now. Asking me the same questions and getting the same answers. Sit down, honey. I won't sit down. 
You've got no right to hold me like this. You threatened Jared Barkley. It was seven years ago. I've forgotten all about it. Besides, it's got nothing to do with Barkley's wife. You could have killed her by mistake. Sure, I could have killed her. Been anywhere near where she was killed, but I wasn't. I told you where I was. Now, you check it out. I checked it. Neither you charge me with killing that woman and do it right now. I'm going to walk out of here. Hired. That's all right. We understand. Jared here? What? I'm here, Fred. Jared, I'm glad. I, uh, I wanted to explain to you about Hyatt. Has he talked yet? Well, he didn't confess, if that's what you mean. That's exactly what I mean. Jared, I had to let him go. I had no other choice. What do you mean, you had no choice? Hyatt says he was in French camp. He went up on the morning boat. He's a liar. Uh, I checked out his story. There are people up there who saw him there. He could have gotten a horse at the livery stable and ridden back here he in an hour. He didn't get a horse at the livery stable. Well, then he I took one up there through. earlier and had it waiting for him. There's it. no proof of that, Jared. Now, Hyatt is right. If he hadn't made that threat against you years ago, I wouldn't have had any reason to bring him in in the first place. I had to let him go. You're a lawyer. You should understand this. All I understand is that my wife is dead and that Cass Hyatt murdered her. Could have been an accident. Somebody out potting rabbits got scared after you they really team. You really believe that? I'm trying to tell you it's possible. All you're trying to do is excuse yourself for letting a cold-blooded killer free. Jared. It's all right, Victoria. Jared, I'm sorry. And that's the end of it. There's nothing more I can do. Well, there's something more I can do. No, Jared. Where did he go? He's gone. He left town right after I released him. Are you going to tell me where he went? I don't know, and I wouldn't tell you if I did. I'll find him. Now, Jared, you listen to me. I didn't know Beth very well, but I do know revenge is not what she would have wanted. Beth loved you very much. Don't destroy the memory of her love by destroying yourself. Where are you going, Jared? After hire. You don't know where he is. Oh, 
and find him. Jared is Beth Hyatt. Did kill Beth. He killed her. All right, say he did, and you kill him. Then what? I'll turn myself into the nearest lawman. And ruin your life. All the life I had went into that grave this morning. That's not true. You think it is. You believe it. But it is not true. Oh, Jared, I know the emptiness you must be feeling. But killing Cass Hyatt is not going to fill that emptiness. It will still be there. There's no use talking about there it. There has to be. Somehow I have to make you understand that you're turning your back on everything you ever stood for as a man and as a lawyer. The things Beth loved you for and married you for. Let me handle this. You go on upstairs, Mother. Please. Now, you hear me. I'm not here to argue with you or plead with you. I'm here to say one thing. If you want to get out of this room, you're going to have to go through me. Oh, Jared. Close enough now. Not just yet, Shad. What, uh, what, what can I do for you? Do you know a man named Cass Hyatt? Well, yeah. Where'd he go? Why, I, uh... Now, don't lie to me, Shad. I know he left town today, and I know he didn't ride out. He didn't go by stage or boat. Now, that leaves your train. Where'd he go? Uh, Mr. Barkley, the sheriff told me not to say anything. All right. One train out of here this afternoon, the 315 South. That goes through Lathrop, Salida, Modesto. I, I'm not going to tell you. Lathrop, Salida, Modesto, Winton. Grass Falls, Fry's Junction, Sent. Fry's Junction. I had had a brother who lived there. That's where he went, isn't it? Fry's Junction. N no. That's what I thought. Chasing you, boy? I just saw Jared Barkley. Barkley? He rode into Rock Point while I was loading supplies. You sure it was Barkley? I recognized him from seeing him at your trial in Stockton. You lied to me, didn't you? No. You killed Barkley's wife. I didn't. That's why he's after you. Cliff, you gotta believe me. I didn't kill that woman. Barkley thinks I did, but I didn't. Get out, Cass. Huh? The only time you ever come here is when you're in trouble. I'm fed up with you and your lies. Now you saddle up and get out of here whilst you got the chance. Now, Cliff, you gotta help me. The two of us could take Barkley. We'd be within our rights if we did. Did you hear what I said? I'm innocent, I tell you. Get out!
Cass ain't here, Mr. Barkley. I, I saw you ride into town. I, I warned Cass. He rode out of here about oh, an hour ago. You can see for yourself. You mean to kill him, don't you? Cass is my brother. I don't care what he's done. You got no right to come in here taking the law into your own hands. You can't see. Oh. Now I'm going to ask you just once. Where did he go? I won't tell you. Where? I won't tell you. Please, please don't. Where did he go? South. South where? I don't know. I just told him to saddle up and get out. He went south. That's the truth. I, I swear it. Cass said he didn't kill your wife. He's a liar. Doesn't worry you that you might be wrong? Not a bit. Then what makes you any better than him? Bottle, honey. Dry as a prairie wolf, and I'm beginning to howl.
Morning, Mr. Barclay. Dr. Saxton. This is Zach Fane, the sheriff. We found your name in your wallet. Where am I? Rimfire. You rode in yesterday, Mr. Barclay. If what you were doing could be called riding. Doc says somebody tried to part your hair with a 3030. What happened? That doesn't concern you, Sheriff. Now, now. You should stay put, Mr. Barclay. You should rest for a couple of days at least. And I've got a couple of days. Well, now, what's your hurry, Mr. Barclay? And if you're going to try to tell me it don't concern me, don't bother. You're in rimfire. In rimfire, everything concerns me. Is that right? You see, I'm just a natural-born snoop. And a worrier. I worry a lot. Especially about hombres who almost get their heads blown off. Now, you tell me what happened. All right, Sheriff. I'm after the man who murdered my wife. When I find him, I'm gonna kill him. If he did what you say he did, how come the law ain't after him? The law can't do anything about him. So what you've done is sort of appointed yourself to take the law's place. That's right. Who is the man, Mr. Barclay? His name is Hyatt. Cass Hyatt. You know him? He rode in yesterday, too. He got himself liquored up. Started an argument in a poker game, went for his gun. What happened? Nobody got hurt. But I arrested him anyway for disturbing the peace. He's in jail. So you see, you ain't gonna get a chance to kill him for at least 30 days. Rest a while? Do you? No. night. You're in here for 30 days. You can't keep me in here without a trial. You want a trial, you'll have one. As soon as the circuit judge comes around again. When will that be? A couple of months. I got some news for you, Hyde. For me? Something that might take the itch out of wanting to get out of here so fast. What is it? A man named Barclay's in town. I'll bet you thought you got rid of him, didn't you? Did he, uh, tell you why he was after me? Says he wants to kill you. Well, what are you going to do about it? Me? You're the law. Well, now, that's true. But on the other hand, Barclay's just saying he's going to kill you isn't a crime. He means it. I think he does. When I told him he couldn't get at you for 30 days, I thought that might take some of the steam out of him. 
But it didn't. Not a bit. The man's cool as ice all the way through. 30 days, 30 years. He'll be out there waiting for you. I didn't kill his wife. I didn't kill his wife. I sort of figure you for a liar, Hyatt. But it don't make any difference. You're talking to the wrong man. Doc couldn't keep you corralled, huh, Mr. Barkley? I want to talk to you, Sheriff. Sure. Sure, Mr. Barkley, sit down. You know, I used to do some marshalling up your way once. A little mining camp called Hirensburg, up river from Stockton. You know what? We used to get a lot of riffraff there, just like here. Only that don't trouble me much. I ride a town with a light rain. I don't much care who a man is, where he comes from, what he's done somewhere else. Just so long as he behaves himself in rimfire. Saddle up and ride, Mr. Barkley. I don't want you to misunderstand me. I know how you feel. Do you? That's right. I lost a woman once. The first Mrs. Fane. She was shot and killed by a drunken cowhand who were on the town. I was in Fort Bannister. I was a young kid deputy. It was a long time ago. God knows I wanted to kill him. And I couldn't tell you to this day why I didn't. But I didn't. Instead, I arrested him. I guarded him, I fed him, I sat with him through his trial. And the hardest thing I ever did in my life was to unlock that cell door and set him free. The judge dismissed the charge against me. Where's the moral to your story, Sheriff? No moral, Mr. Barkley. No moral. No point. Not even an ending. Just sort of faded away. Maybe you loved your woman more than I did. Go home, Mr. Barkley. No. All right. What do you want to talk to me about? How much money do you make? <laughs> Not much. How much? Fifty a month and all I can steal. Six hundred dollars a year. How would you like to make two years' salary in just five minutes? You didn't have that when the doc and I went through your wallet. There's a bank in this town. What do I have to do for that, Mr. Barkley? Turn Hyde loose? That's right. I already told you. He's in here for 30 days. He hasn't been convicted of anything. Well, now, that's true. But we do things a little different here in Rimfire, Mr. Barkley. Seeing as how we're off the beaten path, we don't see the circuit judge too often. So a man usually serves his sentence before he has a trial. loose. 
I'll say one thing for you, Barkley. You sure know how to tempt a man. No. I don't want any trouble in my town. You've already got trouble. It doesn't matter whether it happens now or 30 days from now, it's gonna happen. I'll be waiting outside. Barkley! If you kill Hyatt, I'm going to have to arrest you for murder. And if you try to resist, I'm going to have to kill you. Either way, you're going to be a dead man. Turn him loose. What are you doing? Letting you go. You're free. No. Get out. Oh, look, you can't do this. Get out! You can't do this. Get in! Just a minute. Wait a minute. Put it on. No. No. He'll kill me. Put it on! Or I'll throw you out in the street without it. Why are you doing this? Maybe because you remind me just a little bit of a drunken cowhand I used to know. Now you put that on and get out of here. Listen to me. You got the wrong man. Draw your gun. That's the truth. It doesn't matter to me whether you draw or not. I'll kill you where you stand. to me. I hit her instead. Now you gotta protect me! I'll kill you with my bare hands. Shoot through me to get to him, Jared. Sheriff. Charges against my brother? None that I can think of. Here. This belongs to him.
I saw the sheriff when I was in town this afternoon. They sentenced Cass Hyatt. They gave him life. Don't feel cheated, Jared. I don't. All I feel is shame. I discovered something inside myself that I never knew existed. I pray to God I never find it again. But just forget about it, all of it. All of it? No, not Beth. She was part of it. No, Jared, no. Not that part. Not the ugliness. Will there be anything else, Mr. Barkley? No, thanks, Charles. Jared, look. What? Well, it would appear we're alone. Well, it's past 10 o'clock, Mr. Barkley. Well, it can't be. Don't worry about it, Miss Randall. You two just take your time. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. Do you know what this train is? No, tell me. Something out of time and place. It's like traveling in another dimension. These last four days didn't happen. None of this is real. You're wrong, Beth. It's real. Very real. You know, it kind of frightens me when I think that I plan to stay in Washington for another day. I missed this train. What made you change your mind? I don't know. All I know is that you're here and so am I. I think my whole life has been changed around. I think I knew this was going to happen the first moment I laid eyes on you. You sure that's not the champagne? No, it's not the champagne. I would like to make a toast. To the Coastal and Western Railroad. Here's to that. Denver coming up, Miss Randall.
Jerry, you stay here. Please. Bye, Miss Randall. Charles. I'll get your change. That's right, kid. Well, thank you, sir. Charles. Yes, sir? I want you to take my baggage out of the next car and put it off the train. But I thought you were going on to Stockton, Mr. Barkley. I've changed my mind. Every trip counts, all. Jared back yet? No, no, not yet. When do you expect him? Well, now, that is a very interesting question. We uh, got a letter from him just the other day from Denver. It seems that. Mr. Barkley? No, oh, thanks, Charles. Jared, look. What? Why, well, it would appear we're alone. Well, it's past 10 o'clock, Mr. Barkley. Well, it can't be. Don't worry about it, Miss Randall. You two just take your time. Thank you, Charles. Do you know what this train is? No. Tell me. Something out of time and place. It's like traveling in another dimension. These last four days didn't happen. None of this is real. You're wrong, Beth. It's real. Very real. You know, it kind of frightens me when I think that I plan to stay in Washington for another day. I miss this train. What made you change your mind? I don't know. All I know is that you're here and so am I. I think my whole life has been changed around. I think I knew this was going to happen the first moment I laid eyes on you. You sure that's not the champagne? No, it's not the champagne. I would like to make a toast. To the Coastal and Western Railroad. Here's to that. Denver coming up, Miss Randall.
Jerry, you stay here, please. Bye, Miss Randall. Charles. I'll get your change. That's right, keep it. Well, thank you, sir. Charles. Yes, sir? I want you to take my baggage out of the next car and put it off the train. But I thought you were going on to Stockton, Mr. Barkley. I've changed my mind. Every trip counts, so. all. Jared back yet? No, no, not yet. When do you expect him? Well, now, that is a very interesting question. We uh, got a letter from him just the other day from Denver. It seems that. Cass Hyatt. That's right. The governor gave him a pardon, didn't you know? No, I didn't. Jared knew. I thought he told you. Oh, we didn't want to worry us. What's he doing back in Stockton? This was his home before he went to prison. Well, I hope his home is the only reason for being here. Yeah. So I told Kimball that we'd hold off. 